This is smithy.tv. Thanks for tuning in. You're watching slash listening to Five Questions with Jeremy Lund. I'm Jeremy Lund, and my guest this evening is a director, Sean Cisterna. Nice hey, to have you, Jeremy. If you can't, if you're, if you're just listening, we're shaking hands. You don't get to see this. You only get to see it if you're if you're, if you're downloading the, the the video cast on Smithy TV and hopefully iTunes as well. And let me tell right? you, Jeremy has a great handshake. I felt good. It's firm yet soft. Yes, I like it. Gentle. <laughs> so um, you are. I mean, let's 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 start back at the beginning for you. Let's go back to Ooh, you're you're birth. born. You're born. Yeah. And it's awkward. Yeah, yeah. I remember being cold and <laughs> wet and naked. You remember all of that? Of course. Good for you. Yeah. I have no memory. What's your <laughs> earliest memory? My earliest memory. Um, I remember dreams as a kid. I was, I was. I remember being at the bottom of my grandparents' staircase, and there was this statue that they had in the basement, and somehow in my dream that statue immobilized me, so I couldn't go up the stairs. I couldn't call out to, for my parents for help because the statue was controlling, sucking the the lifeblood out of me and paralyzing me and not being able to, to speak at all. So that was my earliest memory. And it was frightening and terrifying. And there's like a reoccurring nightmare you had? Yeah, yeah. I had one. It's the same kind of thing, but it was instead of it was my whole family. We were forced to work inside of this giant like machinery thing. I remember like the big like gears, like those kind of things. And, that's, and I just remember being terrifying. And I can't remember the details of it, but that's like one of my earliest memories as well. Like inside of a clock sort of thing? I, I, I want to say it's a clock, but it's like, it's just, it was just a giant machine thingy with the right. giant, like, over the, over the top gears and that kind of huh. stuff. And, I've, and I just remember that was something I'd always wake up screaming from. Right. And I probably had that dream for like at least a year. Jeez. Okay. Look at us. What the fuck? I know yeah. we do comedy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Man. I'm sending giant gears to your place. Don't do that. No? I don't want to um, So you started off, I mean, you 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 went through, like, chorus, and you worked at chorus for a long time and did... Yeah, I mean, after university, I went to York University for film production and screenwriting, and uh, actually my first job in the industry was on a kid's show called Ricky's Room, um, and I remember there being postings all over at York for, uh, for to hire students for the summer to work on this show, and I... Oh man, I hate saying this, but I, I ripped them all down so none of so my nobody other, else could do none it. None of my other colleagues wow. could see it. So I was the only one from York that got the job, and that launched my career in the industry. But but just because you were like the, it's like tricking all the other sperm so that you're the one that wins the race. Yeah, I, I kind of felt heartless doing it. I, I mean, there was tons of postings up. They, I guess, they really wanted York students to work there because we filmed uh, on the York campus and. And were they only hiring one person? No, they were hiring multiple people, but just to ensure that I was the only <laughs> one from so, York, I eliminated all my York competition. Jesus. So it was me and then like 30 people from Ryerson got the job. So if you're ever up against Cisterna in any competition... Don't fuck will, with me. If there's postings, I will... throat. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all I did was, come on, remove a few thumbtacks. That's, slashing your throat is a bit extreme. It's it's the equivalent anyway. That's good for you, I guess. Right? You got the job. I'm here. Yes. Well, did you get you didn't get fired from the job, right? Not at all. No, so I lasted three seasons. Enough. Yeah, oh, you did well then. It was awesome. Yeah. Thank God I ripped those postings down. Have you ever told anyone at that workplace that that's how you got the job? Uh, no, definitely not the producer never... who hired me. Um, <laughs> but now he knows because I'm sure he's going to listen to this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, he's funded like three other of my projects, so it's, oh, uh, he's probably going to know now. If I share it with us, this, this <laughs> yes, yeah, he's out in California now. But uh, have you? I assume other people know this story. You're not like unburdening your soul. Uh, right? No, I, I, you know, it's been like 12 years since that show's been on the air. So I think we're we're we've you're passed safe. the the. You're, the you're not worried that this is going to suddenly right, come right, back and bite right, you in the right. ass. Okay, that's good. I'm proud of this story now. I, I needed a good entry into the industry story. Okay, so so, so then what happened after you destroyed the fledging careers of other people? Um. No, it was great because I uh, because being you, know, you know being the only York student and um, I was able to uh, work closely with the the producer who was funding the project. It was for for PBS Kids Television. I got to to write scripts in my third year of university that went to air. Um, got to direct uh, by the time I was in fourth year. Like you know you know as a as a film student, I mean that's great yeah, experience yeah, yeah. to direct stuff for television. So I mean no, it was beneficial in every way. 
Yeah, ripping those postings down. It was, it was a, a, <laughs> That's the best uh, career movie you've yeah, made. It's was true. screwing it's true. other people out of their opportunity. I wish I could do that with telefilm. So I'm going to shut their website down <laughs> so I'm the only one who you applies. Just, you go into Cronenberg's office and you rip down the, <laughs> right. the, the deadlines. And <laughs> Brilliant. I think we, we're on to something. We're on to something. Because yeah. you know, that's how that works. Be a little it's, film ninja. No emails or <laughs> websites these days. You can just go in and systematically shut down yes. the, <laughs> everyone's application. That's the uh, way to do it. I like it. Um, so, you, but while you were there, you ended up developing. How, so, how you, your first project? I'm gonna. I have to cheat. King yeah. of the Camp. Yeah, uh, right? that was the first. Well, big, well, for starting at the beginning. Um, but that was the first big like. Yeah, feature, that, right? that was no. Was well, made, I, I did a movie, movie with with Aaron Ashmore called My yeah. Brother's Keeper. So that was in 2004. But as a producer, I meant as a director, oh, as a director, as a yeah, um, yeah. I did some really shitty low budget direct to DVD sort of thing. Um, so like a series of. I think we shot nine films in three months, like, and they were all like four to five um, days of production for a feature each. So we burned through. Like and where was this? This was. This was. I, I got um, a distributor wanted to put out like, these nine horror films. They said, "I don't care what you deliver; it could be shit in a box." Sort of thing. We just want to design a nice cover. You should have made a movie called Shit in a Box. Was, man, we tried to. Man. The, but no, they they already had. Um, they already co- had made the movie. Co- no, they already had covers pre-designed, sort of thing. Oh, so, so we you, just need supply content. They already had titles for them to go into Walmart and put in their bargain bins. And they already had titles and everything. Ah, well, basic artwork sort of thing. We want a you know a story about you know you know five characters who get locked in a school sort of thing. Make this make it happen. So you know it was it was That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, just out of film school, you know, you're given you know ten or fifteen thousand dollar budgets to work with to do a feature, which is nothing, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But just to practice and and work with a small crew and. And something's going on to Walmart. You know it's going to get distributed right, right, right. in some capacity. Now they're total crap, but it's it was still a fun way to learn. And did you direct production one? in a fast way? Did you direct one of them? Oh, I directed like four or five of them. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. We what were they called? Sort of, oh my god! Um, one was a Christmas movie called um, Holiday Hypnosis. Um, so that, that's a comedy. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Haunting at Thompson High, uh, Blood Creek, War of the Dead, which is about these Nazi zombies who come back to kill the soldiers who originally shot them, sort of thing. That R- makes ridiculous, sense. Like, stupid concepts, but. Uh, yeah, like I said, they're just vehicles or, or, or... And you had to do them in five days. Five, four, yeah, f- between four and six days. What's What kind of crews did you have on those things? Uh, I would say about eight people. Yeah, makeup, sound, camera. I think we had two cameras running and just general helpers just to get it. And you're shooting done. like, well, you were sleeping like two hours a night kind of thing? Pumping, yeah, 12 to 18 pages a day. Yeah, I see something about that. I like. I mean, I think I, it'd be a lot of fun to do something like that as long as you might technically not have to show anybody after. Yeah, that was that. You know, like, we were so it's excited. Like masturbating a little bit uh, um, with with film. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What were you shooting on? Uh, those uh, the DVX one hundred had just come out. Okay, so we got two of those suckers for. Uh, um, Five thousand each, I think, and and so you did like four or five of them. How many of these things were done by this company? Ten, you said nine. Nine. And so were you guys like rotating crew? So you were like you same showing... same crew, different uh, directors. So they just swapped you and like another guy yeah. out, or yeah, yeah. You did like every other one. They at least yep. they gave you a week yep. off, yep. And... so you can prepare and storyboard and <laughs> meet with the actors for two hours to rehearse the whole feature. And then, so what's the post process like on something like that? Uh... Two weeks each, a week edit, maybe a week sound mix, and. But I guess in, in four to six days, how much footage you're actually shooting? I mean, you're shooting a lot. You're shooting eighteen pages a day, but you're not shooting like with two cameras. Um, sometimes you know, A and B cameras would split up, and we'd go. I'd go direct one scene in a wide shot, and, and hopefully that the the operators would uh, just grab all the other coverage and. Uh, why or tight tighter shots when yeah, I yeah, yeah. went off to the other side of the set to do set up another scene sort of thing. So it was directing and hoping they would remember everything I told them for another you know camera just to punch in and grab the coverage that we needed. And so, how old are you when you're doing this? This was just like a couple of years after film school, so maybe twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, it's it was good. It was a good um, post university, getting uh, your feet wet. Directing actors and do you still have copies of these movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. 
I want to see. Yeah. We have to have a movie night one night. Okay. And put these up. Bad projects night sort of I thing. I think so. That'd be fun. We could do our own mystery science theater. Okay. <laughs> we make I'm fun in. of just your stuff. Okay. Because <laughs> 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 I'm there, man. Nice. I haven't relived those since you know 2003 or 2004, whenever we shot them. But yeah. Oh, you um, even gone back? No, I, I tend not to look at stuff after it, it's been done. Like, I hate going to festivals, even now with my current stuff. Just Oh, really? I, I, I always leave the theater after we do our introduction. I'd, ah, but even, like, like, at what point, like, how many times do you watch it before you don't want to watch it again? Uh, two, maybe. Two? Yeah. The, the, the cast and crew screening I'll sit through, and then maybe the first festival, and then I'm, I'm, I can't watch it anymore. They can't do it anymore. Well, no, I just, I, I don't have... Yeah, have you guess have you gone through it yet? Like with yeah, yeah, yeah. When I did my first one, I, I sat. I mean, here's the thing for me: it was like, I mean, we didn't do it. I, I didn't go to all the festivals. We I, I traveled with it to like I think four or five, and I went to I did every screening because for me it was more about I liked seeing what worked for audiences, hmm. and for me it was like a learning experience. It's never the same. The whole like the audience experience doesn't seem to be the same every the same. single time. I think there's a lot of overlap. Mm-hmm. But uh, but there's also a lot of times where it was like, you know, one audience is just going crazy for something, and then another audience is like a little more nuanced, or, and so they don't laugh as much, but they laugh in sp- other spots. So okay. for me, it was like, especially with comedies, I find that watching it with an audience is more important. I mean, who knows? I mean, I might get to the point where, you know, four or five movies, and I decide that it's like, I just don't want to do it anymore. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't gotten to the point yet where I want to walk out it's hard though like especially when you're doing the, the festival that, tour that's that's close together and you're you know you're watching it four or five times right. in a row um for me it was exciting just to to be at to be invited to all the festivals so yeah. i'm like in you know in alaska for the first time i, I just didn't want to sit through and what I, I wanted to explore alaska while i had an extra 90 minutes you know sort of thing <laughs> you know worried about not getting back to the theater for the q a no well I, i'd stay on the street of the, where the theater oh uh, okay just sort of then yeah I think for me too is like I kind of especially if I'm going going to do a Q and A I kind of want to gauge the audience. Ah, okay. That's like smart. if they're not laughing, yeah. I want to know what I'm walking into. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, because if they're really loving it, then I know it's like I know yeah. it's warm. I know it's not. But if it's like, say I walk out and they hate it, I walk yeah. back in thinking it's like, all right, yeah. well, who's got questions? Yeah, they'll yeah. just stare at you, or or it's empty. You're like, why is it empty? At least you get a sense of what you're up against. Okay. Next festival run. You I don't know you. Sit. No, but I think I think I think it's interesting because I I've been to festivals where I see the director walk out and I, yeah. I always go, oh, that's interesting. I don't know if I, mm-hmm. I don't think I'm mature enough yet to walk away mm. and let it play. I think I'm I'm potentially insecure enough that I need to sit there and know how they feel. Oh, I it. thought insecurity would force you to leave. Oh, maybe it could work both ways. You're like very secure if you want to sit there and experience every. See, I thought you were secure. Moment. I'm not secure. No. Oh, well, we're both slightly <laughs> fucked up in our yeah. own little ways. Isn't that nice? <laughs> um. So then, so then, what led to the King of the Camp? That was, was that, and that was through chorus, right? That was through chorus. Yes, we. Uh, it was the last year of this fund called the Chorus. I don't know, Family Entertainment Fund, something like that. Chorus okay, that Kid, sounds familiar. Chorus Kids Fund. Um. We had a bit of private equity uh, from this producer that I did the kid show with. Um, we had a, a concept. I mean, High School Musical had just come out, and, and YTV wanted their own sort brand of, of it. brand of that. Right. So we came in with a, a you know ready-made script, a, a music team who we'd worked with before, who, who did a lot of kids programming, and uh, yeah, they they just urged us to to get in the application right away because they were about to close the fund, and we got the money and. Uh, yeah, we worked closely with YTV to develop the project, and uh, um, it, it went from there. It was a, it was a great um, time to experience working with a, mil- a million dollar budget. It was my first time working with like a million bucks, which is relatively low, obviously. But yeah. uh, just to say, I, I worked on a million dollar project budget, yeah. was, was awesome. And did you co-direct that? Uh, sort of. I mean, the the guy who put up all the money, a guy named Jeff Deverett, um, he's the, the, the producer Fucked of it. Fucked you out of half the credit? Is that what we're... No, I mean, I, I, I would just say... Just nod, just nod. Okay. I, 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 I'm confident in, in saying, you know, I, I directed 25 out of 26 days. Oh, okay. He wanted one day to do this special song that he wrote. But he put his name on the... Did he... How... I'm not going to argue with the guy putting up the money. I don't, oh, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow, yeah. we're partners, yeah. And you guys are still friends? Oh, of course, yeah. Okay, so he yeah. won't get mad that you're... Not at all. We're talking about doing a, another project very soon. I don't. I didn't mean any disrespect. Please don't. Yeah, don't worry, Jeff. I'm, I'm with you. Yay! We're going to move <laughs> on from that. But how was it doing a musical? Like, did you find that to be like super challenging? Or yeah, I mean, I... I, I hated those Grease movies, and I, I could never sit through a musical as a kid. I mean, I like uh, the... I don't know. What, what so were musicals? Why the hell that, did you do a musical? Because it was an awesome experience to work with a broadcaster. Oh, I don't know. Enough. Yeah. yeah, 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 um, yeah. I'll do... I'll, 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 I'm a whore. I'll, You'll do I'll, anything. I'll nice. bend myself into any position to, to work with uh, a company I haven't worked with before and just to, to get, you know, get your foot in the door. But I don't know. What are, what are some musicals that you remember as kids? I like Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, I didn't like that. What? No, I, just, okay, I, we're I couldn't understand how characters would just break into song and because they have hearts and no, souls no, and they, they just have... break into song because you have no other way to express uh, yourself. Uh, no, no, and you I, just... I didn't buy it even as a kid. Well, like, it's not realistic. I know, but but that just bothered you about it. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I was never that. You just happy. can't buy into the conceit of a musical. I just, I, I, I was never happy enough as a kid to to break into song. You know. What I mean? <laughs> So you're I was a bit that of a morbid the, kid. A whole genre I, of I took it out on the characters. You had a miserable yeah, childhood. Right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like any musicals? There's no musicals that you dig. Um, I I'll like I like certain songs, but like uh, after a while, like, it gets really annoying to me. Fair enough. I'm listening to me, you know, I'll listen to "Good Morning Baltimore" from Hairspray. I, I like that, and then then it goes. I love musicals. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do them anymore, man. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Teach yeah. their own. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. Oh, I'll see Les Mis. I want to see Les Mis. That looks kind of that exciting. That looks pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I, I saw that. Les Mis uh, and, on a high school trip to London. Now, is that all singing? Is that going to be a whole movie of singing? Yeah. It's pretty much self-singing. Okay. But that's okay because no one's ever talking and then breaking into songs. So you're going to love it. They're already singing. Oh, okay. They never break into talking. Oh, so it's a world without dialogue. I th I, yeah, I think... I, I, who knows how they're going to interpret it. I if I got Tommy I loved. I like... Yeah, but he was Tommy. Tommy I haven't seen. Okay. Not the movie. I saw the, yeah, the yeah, stage yeah. play, which is which is. Really um, good. But I'm pretty sure Les Mis is all. It's like an opera, right? Wow. Okay. So you get a lot of singing out of you. I'll Unless, see but, it. They, but who knows? Like, I don't know what their interpretation. They might have some dialogue as well. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Christmas Day. Yeah. I'll unwrap my presents and I'll head over to is the it on local Christmas cineplex. Day? Yeah. Is it, is it, so it's going up against Django and Django. Unchained. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's almost more fun to say Christmas, Christmas Unchained. I think <laughs> I'm going to do Django. Christmas Unchained. Unchained. Of course, this is this is in the past now. We've already yeah, had, yeah. when by the time this airs, we've already seen both of these movies. So, what did you think of Les Mis? Man, it was great. Yeah, it, <laughs> it changed the musical genre for me. I'm, I'm ready to <laughs> suck gonna, up another. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna do your own opera now. Bring on uh, Miss Saigon or whatever's uh, coming down the pipe. So then you went from that. So the next thing after that was Moonpoint. Then. Uh, the next feature after that was yes, Moonpoint. And what happened? So what was like? What was the the journey towards that? Um, I brought a nice shiny copy of King of the Camp, which was you know released to all these different uh, DVD stores across the country. It played all all over Canada on on YTV, so broadcast coast to coast. I brought that DVD to all the different funders um, with my with my new script called Moonpoint, and assuming that would be ticket enough to get their yeah, yeah. Uh, attention and uh, just drop check. Off, like, Let me know when you... Yeah, Look just... at this. Has anyone else done a movie before? And, like, and I was really proud of myself, but only to realize many other people have. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, I, I brought uh, a little low-budget script that I had financing for. I, I feel like I had a strong enough resume to at least uh, um, put, in the, put in the application and, and uh, hope for, for funding, but uh, no, it didn't happen. So I was stuck... Um, do I do I tell this whole story now? Do we have time? Maybe? Yeah, go for okay. It. So I I'll cut, I, I'll cut you off. If I'm okay. Uh, basically, I had about a million dollars raised for this this movie Moonpoint, and um, I needed another hundred and fifty thousand dollars from Telefilm, our national funding source, and they uh, they reviewed the the package. They saw that all my financing was in place, but they they still said no. Um, and uh, you know they they didn't think the script was uh, I don't know feasible enough on on. On, on a million dollar on budget. A million dollar budget, and, and then you went and made it for like the yes, tenth of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, because I didn't get their financial contribution to the project, all the other financing had slipped through. So it, it was like as if it was like the perfect storm of every piece of financing was contingent on that final piece, and when that final piece didn't 
present itself or make itself available, then all the other financiers sort of went their ways, their separate ways. So and broke your heart and broke my heart. And so how um, how long did that take you to put all that together? Like uh, a good year and a half, two years maybe. Oh, yeah. Together. So now how much of a difference was then so you have you know you have this the film set up for a million dollar budget how much did the script change as you were paring down to do it for what was the final if you can say the final budget was 78,000 okay so yeah. you know significantly less than a yeah, yeah. million dollars you're paying yeah, yeah. on what, what like how much was it significant changes no the script didn't change at all um yeah uh the no, i think that the main concessions we made were were script days were, were chopped in half or the shooting schedule was chopped in half so instead of you know 24 days we shot in 12 um, looking back we would have used the same actors anyway on a million dollar project versus the uh, you know the the tip project I mean we needed the the extra money to, to fill because we got some money from the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund and to bring a, a crew from Toronto up to Sudbury where we were going to film would have put in all this money that you wouldn't have seen on screen. It mm. would have went to hotel rooms and prostitutes. That, yeah. <laughs> Sudbury prostitutes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, nothing <laughs> against Sudbury and prostitutes. And I love no, I can't say that. Yeah, you started. <laughs> you almost I love there. Sudbury. <laughs> Good. Nice. Nice um, save. So yeah, I mean I can't looking back, I can't think of any um, other than the amount of time we'd had, I can't think of any other uh, reason for shooting at the million dollar level. And in hindsight, you know, even though as much as I bitch and complain that I didn't get this, um, you know, 150000 from Telefilm that I needed, it, in hindsight, I, I'm sort of glad I, I didn't shoot at the million dollar level because all the sales we've made have barely just recouped uh, the uh, money that we did put into the film. And hard out, where, where can we, because it's out, you can see this movie. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's real. Uh, so the movie network has the rights until 2014. So it's currently on the movie network. Um, they bought the rights. Uh, they bought the first broadcast window. Um, Anchor Bay Entertainment has picked it up for for distribution, and it's in all the WalMarts across the country now. Um, I believe in February it's going into the coveted bargain bin at uh, uh, Future Shop sort of thing. Right around Valentine's Day, it's a romantic comedy, so they're hoping to pump those suckers out. Uh, out of the bargain bins and into your homes. Um, and Air Canada also picked it up. So, yeah, we've been all over the country. You've got everything. And iTunes, right? You can get iTunes it. as well, yeah, yeah. Anchor Bay puts it on uh, on iTunes for digital release. And is it just, is it in Canada, but can you get it in iTunes in the States? Uh, we are, we've, we've just partnered up with uh, an international distributor who's taken on the, um, the international sales, and, and she's going to ensure that it's, you know, in every you know market platform across uh, across the world so if at least in your candy you have no excuse not to to check it out no in fact you better you yeah. or what are you gonna do <laughs> sean lock you up in a gear shifty sort of dungeon see why you're going deck. back to my shit uh, well it's awesome I, i've I seen picture, the goddamn movie i picture a little jeremy in a clock just oh, terrified <laughs> Okay, now because, no, we'll, we'll move on. We'll, we'll finish up your your filmography, and then I'll then I'll sure. harass you with my my jar of questions. Man, that thing scares me. Really nice. Well, look, it's I like it. You know what? It just it strikes fear into into the guests. I'm nervous. I, well, there's a I lot. Say, I kind of like it a little bit. Okay, yeah. let's speed through this next portion so I can get to that. Well, it's thirty ghosts. You really want to? No, no. Let's talk about that. So you get so now you're doing a documentary. Yes. What, but you've never done a documentary before? Or? Um, so my, my pay the job or pay the bills job is, is working uh, in kids documentaries. So I work for this company called okay. McIntyre Media and we distribute. Um, I produce all these uh, kids educational documentaries that go to schools across Canada and the U.S. So that's, that's the job that I can pay my bills with. The, the, the bills accruing job is the, the feature filmmaking. Yeah. That's my lose money job. So I've got, I sort of work two jobs. Um, so yeah, so I, I've done a lot of the documentary format I'm, I'm used to, yep. but I've never a, an adult oriented documentary. I know I'm talking for, dirty for, adult. Now maybe. you're sitting at the big kid's table. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I came across this, this bizarre character, Kim Hadfield and spent a few days with her getting to know her. And she's this, um, she runs a horse uh, farm out in, in rural Ontario and she's this really eccentric character she's 
um, her, her dream is to, to prove to mankind that ghosts exist. And she's a very, um, um, what's the word? Adamant. Adamant. Yes. About her, her, her belief. And, um, she'll do anything, you know, whether it be spending all this excess money that she may not have and, and spend it on ghost hunting equipment and site permits to, to hunt at these places. What's ghost hunting equipment? Oh, the they have their their. You were about to say the usual. Yeah, you you know the usual EVPs and uh, EMF (laughs) detectors, right? (laughs) Flux capacitors. No, wait, that's (laughs) That's another movie. Um, (laughs) No, but night vision cameras she uses. um, You know, trap cams that you know trap motion as that goes by. And And am I able to ask you if you think it's bullshit or not? Uh I believe what she believes. So, um, you believe yeah, I, what I'm she not believes? here. Is that the answer? I'm not here to pass judgment on on Fair whether enough. I You're think the, she. I'm the you know, stand the, behind the camera guy. But um, when when I hear things uh, on their little digital recorders that they just leave in homes, abandoned homes overnight, sort of thing, and the next day you'll hear voices and whispering and and scuffling. You know, it could be an animal, but the animals don't say "get out" or whisper the words "get out" and. You don't hear children laughing on these. If it was a parrot, it could say "get out." Uh, yeah, if there are parrots in these abandoned homes out in rural Ontario, then yes, we we this. I am totally debunked. <laughs> um, I, you don't know fucked. that parents aren't just parents. Don't come in when nobody's around. That could be the whole thing. Parents. Well, oh, just... there's a monkey at IKEA this week. Or, I saw that. Or, I know. Or last month. Uh, whatever. I saw, I saw air, that today yeah. on. Uh, it yeah. was going around on Facebook. Yeah. 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 Now, two months ago, this is no longer <laughs> a hot topic, Sean. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Don't reference current events. So um. So you listen back to these tapes and it just scares the shit out of you. It creeps you out. Um. Yeah. It's something that I can't explain. How about that? I, here's the thing. It's like I, I don't see myself as a superstitious mm-hmm. kind of person, but it's like I, I'm. I'm a firm believer there's something else going on. Like, I know that, for example, my um, my in-laws have an old farmhouse uh, in the outskirts of Kitchener. And when my son was, like, one years old, I swear he was communicating with something in the house when we were up in the morning. There was this one part of the, the downstairs that he would always look at and laugh mm. and as if he was wa- – and he would wave. And it, was, it would creep the shit out of me. Mm. And he hasn't done anything since, but it's like there's – I mean, yeah. there's some adage where, like – you know, children yeah, can see, can are sensitive see. to that sort of thing. Yeah, so it's just like so that always creeped me out. And my daughter, who is now the same age he was, has sometimes similar things. So it's like I don't know. It just for me it's just like it's enough to think that right. something's going on, they're witnessing something that I can't. Yeah, you gotta get those kids to some priests. <laughs> yeah, that sounds scary. Um, did you conceive in a <laughs> occult sort of situation? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's how we were able to guarantee the sexes. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, that sounds creepy. I, I wouldn't know how to react if my kid just started talking to no one. Well, and, and then waving. The, it was the first, it was just, I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't thinking about it because it was always like first thing in the morning, he'd get up early and I'd get up with him. And then mm-hmm. it was just, then it was after the once or twice, I was like, wait a minute, this is a reoccurring thing and it's a little creepy. And the one time, it was worse. He's sitting in his high chair, and he kind of like followed his head around as if something was walking past him, and had like kept like his eyes on it, and that's when it really creeped the shit out of me. Right. But he's you know he's almost four now. He's never mentioned it. He doesn't see anything now when he goes to the farm. You didn't ask like dude. I've had, I haven't mentioned it. We just watched Muppets Christmas Carol the other night, and he finished it saying. I love that movie. We're never watching again, ever. <laughs> the third ghost creeped the shit out of him. Okay. Love the second ghost. Big, yeah, yeah. weird, redheaded guy. Yeah, yeah. Can't understand why he would love the second ghost. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, it scared the shit out of him. Yeah. Even though he doesn't do anything scary, he's creepy looking. And I pointed that out to him. I was like, look, this is, this is you know, <clears throat> terrible profiling on your port point, kid. It's like, that guy is just standing there. He just looks creepy. He doesn't do anything creepy. Right. It's like, he's showing Scrooge why he's a shithead. I get you, man. I don't know. I, like, I, I've, I've spent pretty much my whole year in, in cemeteries and abandoned homes. And, um, yeah, more, more often than not, like, the investigations turn up um, very little concrete sort of evidence. But every once in a while, the, the girls will get really excited that they, they hear voices on their recorders and whispers that, you know, shouldn't conceivably be there. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what kind of gets me excited. I mean, this documentary is not about... Yeah, you know, the proof to find the paranormal. It's a, it's a chronicle on on Kim and her 
obsession to to see how far she'll go to to prove to everybody else that you know something ghosts exist. And oh yes, I, I didn't imagine it was the kind of documentary that's going to prove whether or not ghosts right, exist. Right, or not. right, it's, it's, it's a character. Study. It's a character-driven documentary, and uh, you know, Kim's always had the dream to be in uh, her her own ghost hunting show that I mean she wants to make a living as a as a ghost hunter like her, all the peers or all the, the people she idolizes on you know on these on these shows people she, like, she just wants to pay get paid like Peter doing, doing what she loves to do yeah I threw the Peter right. Bankman I'm sorry yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to downplay like I said I kind of I, I have enough I don't I, I'm not one of those types of things that ghosts are bullshit so right. it, it intrigues the hell out of me yeah, yeah. I'm very curious yeah. to, to see the film yeah and the, and the hope is to try to get it into hot dogs, I assume. Yeah, I mean, well, we're working with hot dogs. They're helping to to produce it actually. So they they saw some of our, our rough footage and and they got behind it so much that they launched a, a doc ignite campaign. It's sort of like the hot dogs version of Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter. So they did all the um, the outreach for us. They have a twenty or thirty thousand member database that they they blast out um, content to and emails and. But getting into the docking night doesn't guarantee a screening or No, it's, it's still up to us to ensure that we meet the deadline. And not make and, a shitty and, film. And not make a crappy <laughs> film. But they only take on projects where they feel that this would be good for their festival sort of thing. But so, but it's up to us as, as filmmakers to deliver on that promise that we... And how's it coming? Are you going to hit the deadline? Really good. We showed them... Um, we, we brought them a, a, an ice cream cake today to, to thank them. So we met with the hot dogs uh, <laughs> staff there, and we, we showed like That's a... That's what a, you bring to the table? You bring the ice cream cake? I, hang you on. See, that's what you should have brought with telephone when you brought your script in. An ice cream uh, cake? That, yeah. That's a, not a kid's DVD, a kid's no, musical. No, just an ice, ice they, cream. They wouldn't even give a shit if you had a movie then. <laughs> or a script. They'd like, you brought an ice cream cake. 150 grand right there, Here's buddy. your check. Nice. Gold medal ribbon. God bless you, Sean. <laughs> uh, where were we? Um... I was asking how, how where you're at with. Oh uh, uh, yeah, we yeah we showed like a three minute clip today, and uh, we had tears tears in the audience in three minutes. Yeah, well, it was an audience of three people, but uh, still, they were crying at this rough footage. It was awesome. Were they supposed to be crying? Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. good. But to to yeah trigger that in within three minutes is awesome. That's a good thing. Yeah, it was a good feeling to to show that our our footage is powerful enough to to warrant that sort of reaction, which is awesome. Very yeah, I'm excited about this. Um, I, I think I'm less nervous about th- this movie than like Moon Point, for instance, because it's so um, it's documented. Like I didn't write the fucking script for this. It's it's I, I can't take the blame for directing something, uh, directing a scene. It's not your fault. If it's Kim's not my fault. Boring. Right? Yeah. Or or if it, or if she says something that you know structurally shouldn't be there, and um, yeah, so it's like the, it's less pressure. It's just you know, documenting a, a real subject, and the I think the real. Um, uh, directing happens in the editing room, which is uh, when you s- structure the content. And yeah, I- I'm sort of struggling with um, you know things that happen chronologically. Like I- I'm, I'm getting nervous that you know once we move you know, them around, move, start moving them around, is that ethically bad? Or I think it was Pen um, Pen Juliet said that as soon as you cut anything, you're automatically lying. <laughs> okay. So yeah, makes so, sense. so it's like you know you're auto, you're always lying in a documentary yeah. by oh, even just omission yeah you know by by trimming up this sentence or whatever you're you're automatically yeah man like I don't know I, maybe I shouldn't be so nervous I'm worried that the fucking documentary police are gonna barge down my <laughs> door no documentary I know but it feels like they they are if, out if there were it's yeah. like the uh, the fast food dude the with the spurlock he'd have been locked right. up a long time okay ago. Man, okay. Yeah, you're doing just fine. Okay, okay. Good to know. Yeah, there's no documentary. You're my documentary lawyer. How about that? Done. Okay. I, I'm very expensive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You want to you st- I'm ready, tackle man. the jar? Yeah, you're psyched up? You're Let good me to go? put my hand in so that the rule filthy is hole. You got you to pull it out, but you okay. can't read it. You got to hand it to me. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I might have to like tweak the question. Gotcha. And I might just make up whatever I want to ask you anyway. Okay. These are all blank. da na 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 Ah... If you had to choose another filmmaker to remake a film of yours, who would you choose and why? Um, I would choose John Hughes, if we're allowed to choose dead people, to remake Moon Point. Nice. We, we went to the Edmonton Film Festival, and the programmer introduced our film as, um, imagine John Hughes uh, directing David Lynch's The Straight Story, something like that. 
Oh, that's an interesting comparison. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we were going for a sort of a John Hughesy vibe. So, uh, I would like to see what John Hughes would have done with seventy-eight thousand dollars and a bunch of cool indie Canadian actors. Do you think he would? He wouldn't have went with the same cast, though. Oh, are they allowed to? I don't know. Work Is with it John Hughes people? when he was working? Is it John? Hughes? Well, it's not now. <laughs> well, yeah, fair, fair enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would be thirty ghosts. Yeah, at yeah. Point. <laughs> Aw, tear for John Hughes. I miss John Hughes. Did you know him personally? I did, did not you, know him you, personally. I <laughs> see those. Those are the movies of my childhood. Yeah. I, I love John Hughes. Stuff. Not candles. Not, not musicals. No, but he. No. I guess he didn't do a musical, did he? No, he used music very well. I, I mean, I loved Ferris Bueller and. It's true. Whole, His movies are like it's it's it's, it's I, I guess yeah. I, for a second, like a split second, I thought it's like did he do a musical? But it's because. Like he's got such a strong, there's a strong sense of music within his right. Oh, I man, twist and shout! I can still picture Matthew Ferris Broderick. Bueller. Yeah, it's awesome. I want to say big, but he didn't do big. No, no, no. It was uh, who did big? Your who wish did, who did big? Oh, was, oh, who did big? No, but I was in Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Music in that is don't yeah. you? Yeah. Can't Forget sing about it. me. Yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> don't sing it. I, okay. I, you, just, you just cost me ten thousand dollars. <laughs> oh. Gotcha. <laughs> You cast Ryan Gold. You know what? Sing the whole thing. I'll do the bass line. Um, Let me reach in and grab an eye. No, can, can are we not? done? Yeah. So, so, but oh, yeah. so you picked John Hughes. So, I mean, it's interesting because I asked someone else this question in, in another podcast, and they went with someone like completely out of their wheelhouse because they wanted to see like an alternate version of the thing. So it's interesting you picked someone who was already kind of in the same wheelhouse. Ah, okay. Yeah. But that's. Who would, who, would, who would you like to see a fucked up version, do a fucked up version of Moon Point? <laughs> um, oh, that's a good question. Sergei Eisenstein, maybe? Jesus like Russian. Uh, okay, you're done. Next mon- question. Montagist. <laughs> Definitely New York. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went to Moscow a couple weeks ago, too, so I'm all, I'm all in my Eisenstein phase again. <laughs> I'm watching Potemkin. So. Yeah, the steps yeah, over yeah. and over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. No, just to see like a, a I don't know, old-time filmmaker use archaic technology to to remake a modern film. That'd be awesome to see that, that sort of done in reverse. Yeah, yeah, with today's narrative techniques, I would love to see what. A, a I wonder what they would. I don't know. It's just like it's interesting. It's like is. You hear, like, it's funny, because it's like, everyone's shooting digital now, unless you're, like, you know, Tarantino or Spielberg, and, and you refuse to shoot mm-hmm. on digital. There was an interesting, they did, um, I don't know if it was the Hollywood Reporter. Did, oh, that uh, roundtable That roundtable, yeah. it was Hollywood Reporter, and Tarantino was saying that it's... Well, I didn't it's, sign up for this, yeah. Yeah, it's television. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, it's like, yeah, but it's like, it's just what you're used to now. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's kind of... I want to say it's kind of. I don't want to say he was being a little bitch, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like it's just at the same time. It's like it's still storytelling. Yeah, I feel like the storytelling hasn't changed. Like how how does the the camera you use affect the story at all? Yeah, and it's just, and it's not like the visual is compromised. Like not at all. I you know, it's like dude, it's like you know, they shot the Hobbit in the same movie. I I came. I just shot my movie on. Mm. And it's just like it just be, just because it becomes more affordable. It's like that's not a, a bad thing. Right. I mean, it also means that there's a whole lot of there's a lot more shitty movies now because right, right. everyone thinks they can make yeah, yeah, make yeah. a film. But yeah. at the same time, it's just like it's it's I don't know. It's just kind of pissed me off a little bit that's a very elitist comment yeah I guess and it's a, I can get it that's your preference mm-hmm. but don't say that it's like you know the 95% of filmmakers that are using this are not making films right you right. know they're, I mean if you want to say that in, because film means you're shutting on film mm-hmm. then fine then they're making movies right or now uh, have whatever. you shot on film before I just I found it so laborious and, and I shot on film in film school yeah I haven't shot anything like in my professional right life on film yeah, just yeah. because it's like the, yeah it's ridiculously expensive right. and yeah. you need like 10 extra people yeah to be able to do it right yeah yeah um, it's frustrating loading it up in a black bag and well that was the scariest part about film school is that you just hope the guy that did that right. didn't fuck it up right and you don't know until the end yeah. right yeah, you just hope that the yep. film came back and, and it I had no idea what an f stop was in first year university <laughs> and how to turn the knot out on the camera to make sure there was an exposure. Light meters, I've never heard of them before, and it's scary shit. It is scary, especially when that those rolls of film cost two hundred dollars, and you know it's, you got to spend another two hundred dollars to 
process it afterwards. It's a uh, terrifying as as a film student. It's an, I mean it's an interesting argument on like uh, on all that old stuff and digital now. Um, even when you look at it, it's like you know the idea of like the digital cameras, like your digital DSLRs and that kind of stuff. Where you know before you had twenty four shots, and so you really thought about the shots you were going to take. Mm-hmm. You know, unless you had you know indisposable income. And you could just blast off right, right. twenty rolls of film. You know, you were like, I'm gonna only take shots that where now you can just do that. So you're not so you know, there's the argument that people aren't putting as much thought into what they're doing because they can just delete it and start over again. Man, when you when you're under pressure and you have a crew of people standing around, you're trust me, if you if you have a crew there, you are prepared. Yeah. I feel like, you know, that's that's a not a valid excuse, but Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I think there's a I think Walter Merch yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, cause he's one of those guys that is a constant proponent of, of new technologies and that kind of stuff. And, and one thing that I find interesting that he was talking about, cause he's one of the, was one of the first guys to try out final cut mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and avid and, and move on into the digital, digital arena. Um, but, but one thing he said he misses and he didn't realize it until he went back and was like recutting something was the idea that, um, by having to like, pull out the old reels of film and, and put them up and, and cycle through them to find the shot. He says a lot of times he would find something that he forgot about, like a little look or something that he would never have looked for if it would, didn't just happen to be on this other reel, mm. where once everything's binned and cataloged inside of a folder, it's like you don't go into that because you don't need to. You know exactly where you're looking for for the shot you're looking for. So he said he always wondered about those little happy accidents that he would find back in the old film days. Right. And if... You know, if if there's a loss because of something like that. Hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't sure. know. My, my, my argument to that is that it's like, well, if, you know, there shouldn't be any happy actions. You should be going through all your footage and making notes at the offset. If you were prepared, yes. So fuck Absolutely. you, merch. <laughs> we need t-shirts that say that. Jesus. Fuck you, merch. <laughs> Hashtag fuck you, merch. <laughs> Let's see if that trend on, on Twitter. All right. Next. <laughs> Next. Nope, that was Sean saying that, Walter Merch. I think you're awesome. <laughs> he directed Return to Oz. Do you remember that movie? It's the only yes. movie he ever directed. There you go. Number two. A little factoid for you. All right, question two. Oh, this, this does not apply. Not does no. not apply. Sorry. Do, 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 do. You can't, that's going to cost Goldhauer more money again. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh. Coffee or tea? <laughs> uh, coffee. Yeah? yeah Why? Yeah. Why? Um, uh, I, I, I like saying double-double. Yeah? Um, You're a double-double roll, guy? Rolling up to a window and saying, can I have a large double-double? Yeah, it's just quick and easy. Uh, I think I'm programmed to it now. Ever since I was allowed to drink coffee in university, it's just it's been a staple of my daily routine. I only drink it black. Oh, yuck. I like the taste of coffee. Really? Yeah. On its own. On its own. So what do you buy, like, when you go to a grocery store, for instance? Or are you, like, gourmet coffee guy? Well, I mean, that, I think that's the other thing, too, is I think that it's like you're, like, adding a lot of sugar and cream and stuff. You're mm-hmm. disguising that. I mean, that's why, I mean, not Yeah, to, it's like not drinking to, a dessert. Yeah. yeah, it depends on how much you add. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also disguised as bad coffee. Okay. What, that's what, valid. What's the old, there's a, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get fucked with the quote, but it's like, the, it's a... Uh, Bad scotch needs water, and good scotch can handle it. Hmm. So do you color correct your work? <laughs> Ooh. No. Yeah. No, I do. <laughs> no, but so for me, it's like, I like, I mean, uh, my dad drank coffee black. So when, yeah. I, when I first started drinking coffee, I didn't even know you could add sugar and stuff to it. And so by the mm. time I got around to doing it, it just didn't taste right to me. Okay. Um, I'm not a coffee snob, but I, there's certain coffee I prefer over others. Mm-hmm. For sure. I like to try new coffees when I go to, to different countries and you always regions. You automatically go with the, the cream and the sugar? Oh, no. Like, if, if I'm going to taste something that I haven't ever, to ever tasted before and probably never will again, I'll drink it black. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, for sure. We were in the, the, the Blue Mountains of Jamaica where apparently this, this I forgot the name of the, the, the brand, but it's a Blue Mountain coffee up in the, the peaks of a Jamaican mountain, and they picked them. The workers pick the the seeds off there and grind it up on top of the mountain. You can taste it fresh from the as it's picked. So I haven't had that fancy. Yeah, it was awesome to experience that, and it's very. Do you like tea at all? Moment, uh, tea at all? Um, yeah, yeah, it's there. It's it's good when I'm sick and yeah. I a little little bit of honey. But no, as a, I try to be a tea guy. 
I just can't because there's such great varieties yeah. and whatnot. You mm-hmm. got the you know the great like the David's Teas and those right. kind of shops where you can go in and you mm-hmm. get the. But yeah, I just mm-hmm. oh, when I'm sick, and then I and then then I usually go for like the teas that taste terrible. Right. But they just make you well in like two days. They just right. strip all the stuff out of your throat. You have to gag them down. Yeah, it makes me pee faster. I mean, it's drinking hot Teenage, water. I don't know hot flavored water. Pee faster. I feel like it, I feel like the heat of the tea just goes down to the bladder, and it's like you need to be cleansed right away. And it's, nice. Yeah, I like tea. I mean, I don't crave it. I like I crave coffee, but it's there. It's, it's, it's like it's, coffee and water are the only yeah, two, yeah. only two liquids I put in my body for right. the most part. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, nice. Ba-dum. Moving right along. Man, da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. that's three thirty thousand dollars gold has to pay out of this episode. There are crumbs in this cookie jar. Really? No, there shouldn't be. <laughs> Paula was really upset that there wasn't food in there. <sighs> Do you have kids? Yes. Oh, one. So I can ask you this. Otherwise, I couldn't ask you this. How has having a child changed you as a storyteller? Um, or a filmmaker? I now. I have uh, ever since having my daughter. How old uh, is she? She's two and a half. I, I have far less time than I used to have yeah. b- before um, before having a child. So I am able to make decisions a lot quicker. Um, I feel like that that's helped me. And, uh, and I maximize my time t- yeah. to the max, like on a daily basis. That's exactly I, what I find. You, you help weed out the bullshit way faster. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm more direct to the point. I can, I can, I, I feel like I could deal with uh, adults. A lot better now too because I can just I I remember because, own, you, because you know how ten, temper tantrums right, work right right yeah or or I can ask questions in a way that will make <laughs> you can placate people yeah okay if that's if that's what people. I'm getting at yes that's that's exactly it no but um, you know but on on the other hand I do feel more uh, I, I feel like I enjoy fun a lot more I guess now as a as a is a person without a lot of uh, time, I, I I crave fun. I crave escapism, nice, and, and that sort of helps me. I guess you know tell stories better. I suppose. Yeah, I, I mean that's one thing I found too, is especially is the idea that it's like I don't know if it's like the ideas are just better or if it's just that I weed out the crap ones faster because mm, I'm right. like where before you might entertain it longer and be like, well, I can maybe I'll do this that way. Like, no, it's gone. It's dead. Yeah, yeah. It's t- it's not for sure. It's not it's not amazing and therefore is not worth the yeah. very little time I have. Yeah, and because I do have so little time, I think I'm, I'm more choosier with the, the, the projects that I want to do. Um, like, like You start to see your mortality. And, and because I know that the time commitment of a feature is so, uh, you know, it's, it's a huge time commitment. And if, if that's going to take me away from my, my daughter and my wife for an exorbitant amount of time, then it has to be, you know, the right projects. Aw, yeah, look it's at true. you! You're a big softy. I need a clip of that sent to my wife on Valentine's Day. Nice, You're nice. Well, no, we might be able to air this one on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Around there, okay. We'll try. Sweet. You have to remind me. Oh, then, no, then no. Moon Point is available at Future Shop uh, <laughs> in the bargain bin section starting around Valentine's Day, so it's going to be awesome. Don't Perfect timing. Pour your shit on my show okay, unless sorry, I ask you to. Sorry, dude. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Number nice. four. I think, right? Because we had a bogus one in there? Yeah. This one. That's going to be a good one. Oh. What's the worst thing that's happened to you that's best inspired your work? Worst thing that happened to me that's best inspired my work? Um, I, uh, I, I think when it was, we were filming Moonpoint, and... Um, and you were we, getting a, a we, Siberian prostitute. No, 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 no. This is bef- after that. Um, we were filming this this karaoke scene, and uh, I I had a, a you know a, a song I wasn't really too thrilled with lined up to for the characters to perform, and then we met with um, our actors, and you know they they didn't agree with the song that I, I had access to, um, so we just went with a, a well known Canadian song called um, uh, what the hell is it called <laughs> well known Canadian. I, I know what song it is. I'm not it's gonna a help home you. For, home for a rest yeah. by Spirit of the West. Um, so just, just based on that decision, not really going, uh, accessing the rights beforehand and just hoping it worked out afterwards was, uh, was pretty, uh, dangerous and, and exciting and, and I, I don't recommend doing it, but I, I, I loved how, you know, it worked out in the end and, 
You can only done two options on songs. Just for no. safety. What was no. the song you wanted them? You're um, gonna sing. Can you say? Uh, no, I can't say. No, I mean, I'm in I'm in trouble with that company right now because I wanted to use them in this in the in the doc, but they, they want too much, and I uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still sort of negotiating. I can if we can sub this part in later, maybe after I get the yeah, rights. I'll to just, it. You'll tell me, and then I'll yeah. tweet it. Okay, I'll do that. How yeah, that? and then it's my yeah. fault, right? And I'm the prick. <laughs> Okay. We'll do that after the show. Do that. Okay. Yeah. Last question. Come on, this can't be the last one. This is fun. No, we can do bonus. We can keep <laughs> on chatting. It doesn't have to be over. Oh! <clears throat> You're doing a remake of The Wizard of Oz. Oh, God, I love The Wizard of Oz. Okay. Who do you cast as the Lion, Scarecrow, Tin Man? Hmm. Okay, let's go. Okay. Is Dorothy still Judy Garland? Or? You can recast Dorothy, too, if you'd like. And the witches. Go ahead. You can do the whole cast. Oh, man. Come on. This is, I, <laughs> this is tough. Okay, we'll start with the, the, the Tin Man. Or the, oh, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, he was being a bitch about it. Well, help, help me along with this. Um, okay, Scarecrow. So we need someone sort of limber and... Uh, if you want to be obvious about it, I'd go with Patton Oswalt. No, he'd be a good lion, don't you think? Oh, he'd be an amazing lion. Yeah, okay, perfect. We got our lion. We got our lion. We can just go comedians. Okay. But then I, I'd go Louis C.K. for it. No, Louis C.K. is Tin Man. He'd be a good lion, too, though. Yeah, he'd be a good lion. Yeah, yeah. But that's the obvious. But he, but he could do, like, the sad, dour yeah, yeah. Tin Man, I think. Who's got a long, mopey face? For the uh, for yeah. Scarecrow? Yeah. He's not a comedian, but I think Jeff Goldblum would make an amazing Scarecrow. <laughs> This is a good question for you, then. See, I'm yeah. answering your guy. No, we yeah. have to start. You can't use any of those. You have to start from scratch, and you have to do it. Hmm. Now, we need a singer as well, right? Maybe I'll go... It doesn't have uh, to be a musical version. Oh, it does. W- okay. Wizard- I loved Wizard of Oz. Okay, okay, so that was the one musical you'll go But they for. had a lot of dialogue in between. Man, I feel like I don't want to fuck this up, because it's the Wizard <laughs> of Oz, right? You're not actually doing it. You're right, you're right. <laughs> MGM is not going to call you tomorrow and go, Sean, we loved your casting choices. You're our guy. What about... Um, she can go with like Todd McFarlane toys version of The Wizard of Oz and go fucked up with it. <laughs> can, can you talk for a bit so I can Jesus. think? I just randomly go spew tell you about my day. Wax po- yeah, what'd you do this morning? this morning and I had a nice little bowel movement that agreed with me greatly so you're not gonna be able to concentrate if i do this i can't think of anyone anyone jesus other than louis ck and uh pat oswald how about the witches then good witch and bad witch well i feel like now i got mila kunis in my head because i saw the oz trailer recently uh, man i suck you're poaching this, this sucks do you feel bad about yourself now i do i, I can't this this would be like a, a, a dream sort of casting thing to do. <laughs> and i'm just launched at yeah that yeah game. Um, now I, uh, no, I can't do it, man. I feel like I let you down. Let's do another one. <laughs> Save that one. That one's too hard. I don't want to screw that up. Okay. So we're redoing question five. Yes. Oh, so what, what was the main difference between making your first film and your second one? Um, not say, let's not count the little five day ones you did. Like, let's, sure. Let's yeah. yeah. Moon point. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a whole different, um, way of telling stories. Like one was a narrative and. Uh, now I'm working on a documentary, so that's I guess the, the glaringly most obvious one. But um, um, not having a, a script to work from, like a, a solid structure. I mean, documentary storytelling is as it happens. I yeah. mean, we Did you write like an outline for it at all? We had an outline, but it changed yeah, very, yeah. very rapidly. So maybe five percent of my original idea is still in there, and just life happened, and we we followed the road that life. Took. Yeah. Do you find that you go back and revise the outline, or you um, just don't even bother with it? Yeah, I think as 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 I saw this 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 whole different um, uh, story arc happening, I, I I sort of revised the way I was capturing, I guess, each moment and structuring it in a way that would fit that storyline better. So all the the questions that I would ask, or or situations that we may have found themselves in all tailored to that new sort of offshoot storyline and that seems to work a lot better for our, our film originally it was about ghost hunting and this one character and her um you know her her tales about about ghost hunting but it's it's taken a much more human character driven 
study on this this character. I mean, I, th- I think some of the better documentaries do that. Like they, I mean, yeah. well, the thing is, you've got to be willing to do that. Too. Yeah, and that's it. and that's the, yeah, the yeah. real testament to, to good documentary filmmaking right. is, is going where the story goes and not just kind mm. of shoehorning it into the mm. the square peg that you had originally conceived. Right, right. As. Yeah, and I, I love these like gritty, um, yeah, character driven pieces. I you know it doesn't have a a strong social message toward at like at the end of the film or anything. It's just a an intense character study. I love uh, American Movie. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. story of Mark Borchardt, yeah, the, yeah, the filmmaker. So that that's sort of the the feel that we're going for. Yeah. Grizzly Man, these odd quirky characters on bizarre quests. That's that's what we want to. Grizzly Man is still one, when that fucking the tree comes down. And just Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. How you can you... you can watch Grizzly Man free at NFB or no, they don't. You can get the app. There's an app. Yeah, you can watch yeah, yeah. NFB films free. There's a great sequence where, what? <laughs> with the tree, yeah, the tree rigs <laughs> when he's testing the suit. Amazing. Yeah, I never thought I'd come across a, a character as as uh, unique as oh, nice. as uh, you know as Peter Lynch did in, in Grizzly Man, but I think we found that in, in Kim. I think audiences will really respond to her and her her dream, her ambition. And oh, nice. Do you think you're going to pursue documentary stuff in the future, or, or is it just going to be a matter of you have to find? Yeah, I mean, we. Um, I have a, a couple other narrative scripts yeah. coming down. On the a whole, line. are you more drawn to to narrative? This this one documentary was special, and it okay. sort of uh, um, it was it was a character I couldn't pass up, and it was it just happened to be the right time for all this thing, all these things to be happening in our life that we we pounced on it and spent the year with her. Nice. Do you, so what else do you got? Do you have anything else you want to talk about that you can talk about going on? Now um, is your chance to whore. You may now whore yourself. Oh, upcoming? Uh, after this? I mean, uh, I, I work with a guy named Avi Fettergreen. He's my producing partner, and Avi's licensed, or optioned some books um, that we, we now have the rights to. Um, one of the, the CBC Canada Reads finalist novels uh, is a book called Fruit. It's about this overweight young boy whose nipples talk to him. So it's a very odd, quirky, festively type uh, uh, comedy, um, and that was only beat out by the the Book of Negroes, which is the big uh, Oprah book club sort of thing. So this came in second place to that. So we nice. got we snatched up the rights. Um, to your, the Nipple Boy comedy, Nipple Boy comedy. It's Thanks. very funny, man. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, so that that's probably the the farthest one in, in development. I mean, we have a couple drafts of the script, and I think we're ready to put that in the financing gear mode after Thirty Ghosts is done. Try to get some shit going. With mm-hmm. it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to wrap up, yeah, you got two options. Okay. Uh, the tradition on the show is you either have to display some kind of talent, okay, with which you could have, or you have to arm wrestle me. Okay. Um, a talent. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna entertain. I'm not trained, but in arm wrestling, I'm not no? particularly good at it. Can can I be? Can I? I can do this. Can you do this? It's got. Double jointed fingers that can, can sort of bend it, like that. Give me a side shot. No, Which way? Okay, here. I can't do it. Yeah, it's, it takes a lot of mind power to do that, but it's pretty creepy. No one else can do that that I've met, at least. Well done. Uh, is that a talent? I, I, that I a, can't do it. So, so it's, a freakish skill. Yeah. Well, we can, yeah, freakish skill yeah, and talent. Maybe I can tell people that if you've got a freakish <laughs> skill that you can exploit in yourself. We will arm wrestle over arm wrestle over the credits. How about that? Well, there's no credits, but sure. Shit. <laughs> Were we going to do both? But you have the freaky hands. What if you're? <laughs> Jesus. You have, you have right. the soft Count hands. Count us in, though. Ryan. Oh, I do have soft hands, but they're they're misleading. Okay. All right. One. For you, honey. Valentine's Day. Two. Let me win, asshole. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, you're actually really strong. Yes, I did it. Well done. Thank you. Uh, well, thanks for coming on the show and busting my arm. No problem, pussy boy. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> See you next week, pussy boy. Uh, you've been watching Five Questions with Jeremy Lalonde, and uh, like the Facebook page. And if you want to throw any of your own questions in, we'll put them in the jar. So uh, this has been me with Sean Cisterna. Cheers. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Toodles. Ding. Branding and graphic options for your corporate video, consider these questions. Do you have company graphics, logos, and designs that you want to include? How much of a role will graphics play in the video? Do you require animation, special effects, or sound effects? Will graphics and branding elements be provided by your company? How do these elements factor into the message and overall goals of the video? 
Answering these questions and understanding the role of branding and graphics will give you a better idea of how you can enhance your video by adding special effects and graphics and images at the right time to have maximum effect.